What's up you guys? Hey, it's Kevin Schmidt, physical therapist, bike fitter out here in Portland, Oregon at Pedal PT again. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, again, if you guys find any value here with any of these uh, topics that we discuss, please feel free to subscribe or like uh, and comment. We always love your comments as well. So today I want to talk a little bit about crank lengths. Uh, this is becoming such a common hot topic now, the idea of going shorter cranks. Uh, so there are kind of some reasons why we would expect to get shorter cranks or where short cranks could be useful. So I think maybe the first thing we'll do is let's talk about what are your cranks, uh, what do they do, uh, and how to, can that be affected by perhaps maybe some limitations in your hip, uh, your knee, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and why we would make some decisions on why to go shorter cranks. So I think the well, first thing we'll do is let's talk about cranks themselves. Uh, if I move this out of the way, you can probably see this from down here, but this is your crank right here. Uh, this is kind of an adjustable version of a crank that we will work with with folks that uh, sometimes are getting custom bikes and things like that. But basically the crank uh, is basically just the piece that connects your pedal uh, to the bottom bracket uh, and to the pieces. So as we pedal, it's the crank that basically kind of transfers the force from the pedal to the bottom bracket, which then turns the, the chain and gets our bike moving. So that's kind of the crank. And most of the time, uh, these cranks have been fairly, you know, generalized as sometimes we would get them into about three different sizes. Uh, if you have a smaller bike or a bike usually less than maybe a 52 centimeter bike, the crank length will be somewhere around 170 and that's in millimeters. Uh, if we start to move into kind of the mid medium range of bike, so you're, uh, let's say 52, 53, 54, up to maybe a 56 to a 58, your crank length would be 172.5 millimeters, okay? As we get a little bit bigger bike, uh, you know, this 58 centimeter and above, generally those cranks will usually run anywhere around 175. Where do we come up with these numbers? Uh, I'm not quite sure where all these numbers originally came from, but the idea being is that if you imagine a smaller bike, a lower to the ground uh, bike or a lower bottom bracket to the ground, a shorter crank would do you benefit because as we are turning those pedals, if we have to turn or lean the bike at the bottom of the pedal stroke, that's where we run into issues sometimes of catching that pedal on the ground. So again, if we had a very small bike or a very tiny bike, uh, like a 46 with a 175 or long crank on it, you can imagine if we're turning while pedaling, there's a chance we could kind of catch that pedal. Uh, so that's kind of the general rule. I think they just thought of the bigger the bike, the longer the crank. So they've kind of come up with this kind of uh, basically kind of maybe outdated system of small bike 170, uh, medium sized bike 172.5, large size bike 175. So let's talk about crank lengths and why it matters. So if you think about the crank, the main thing that it does is it propels us, it gives us leverage, it allows us to push with our foot through the pedal. Basically what that does is that also then the longer the crank, the more that we are gonna bend our knee and our hip at the top of the pedal stroke. A lot of times crank length comes into when it's at the top of the pedal stroke. And when we've got a longer crank at the top of the pedal stroke, that just requires us to have a little bit more hip flexibility and a little bit more knee flexibility. Meaning, can I bend my hip past, let's say 90 degrees, 100 degrees, 120 degrees. The higher we have to get that foot over the top, the more challenging it's gonna be for someone with a tighter hip or a tighter knee, someone who cannot bend their knee past 90 degrees per se. So that's what we're starting to see people, we're getting people getting shorter cranks because therefore at the top of the pedal stroke, it's much less taxing to your hip and your knee. Sometimes people that have hip issues or let's say a knee replacement, a hip replacement, things of that nature, shorter cranks are just gonna be easier to turn the pedals. It's just less force required and a lot less range of motion of your hip and your knee and your trunk for that matter as we go shorter. So that's generally the rule. Uh, I think a lot of times uh, triathletes uh, will go shorter cranks because the idea is as we lower ourselves or as we get this out of the way and show you what I mean, um, if we get lower over the bike, if we're really kind of having to lower ourselves down, so such as like in an arrow or a tri positioning, the lower you get the trunk, the more that also will limit uh, your knee and your ability to get your knee over the top of the pedal stroke, and that's hip flexibility. If we do tend to shorten that crank, you're able to get a little bit lower, a little bit more arrow position while still completing a full revolution, revolution of the pedals without hiking your hips or compensating with your back, if that makes any sense. So a lot of times bikes with a 
saddle here, bars quite a bit lower or quite a big saddle to bar drop. Sometimes people will benefit from having a little bit shorter cranks, but it all ultimately comes down to into the ability to more of the top of the pedal stroke versus just being a shorter crank. Like we talked about, possibly when you're tilting or turning, you don't want too long of a crank if you're bumping your crank arm when you're you know, pedaling around a corner, that could definitely cause, uh, cause some injury or some accident as well. So let me know your thoughts on that. Typically shorter crank, you're gonna be able to spin a little bit faster cadence uh, with less effort. So sometimes that's a little bit easier to tap into that aerobic system. If we go too short, of course, now we're pedaling this little tiny, so you're pedaling very, very fast, but not really generating much torque. So I don't know how much science there is behind a lot of this kind of uh, trend towards the new cranks, but this is becoming a huge thing where they're showing cranks of, you know, 145, 155, all the way up to 180. So I think people are just kind of playing with that, but more than likely your decision-making needs to be on joint limitations of your hip and knee versus maybe trunk, how much drop you have from bars to saddle. That'd be another decision making. Um, but a lot of times don't get a short crank just because you have maybe knee pain. Maybe that's not the reason. Sometimes you can get pain from bending the knee too much at the top of the pedal stroke, but oftentimes you're, typically your decision making or your decision tree is not gonna be based on, I have knee pain, so therefore I need to go shorter cranks. That isn't necessarily always the idea. A lot of times knee pain can come from cleat position, saddle position, other things that we've talked about on these videos as well. So hopefully that kind of helps answer a little bit of the questions. The short crank thing is becoming kind of a real fad right now. So please, if you have questions about crank lengths or why you would change crank lengths, please drop some comments below. As we always say, it's your questions that keep this channel going. So please keep them coming. Uh, I'd love to be able to answer these things for you. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Keep those questions coming so we can keep answering them for you. Uh, otherwise, Kevin Schmidt, physical therapist, bike fitter out at Pedal PT, Portland, Oregon. Have a great day. We'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.